Man, with COVID-19, one-third of the GDP in Africa has just dropped. Overnight, man, just dropped. And even though GDP is the wrong index, at least uh, I believe it's the wrong in index to, to, to measure the growth, uh, the, the African growth, I think it's, it's obsolete now, but still. And, and, and we've seen now gaps in the strategy growth that Africa has been using for the last few years because now the wealth is, is, is dropped. We see now the, 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 the poverty gap increasing. And there's fundamentally a problem that we need to solve. There's fundamentally, this gap needs to be eliminated or minimized. And this is what the vlog is all about. Uh, you know, I'm doing a vlog to explain what I believe we need to do to minimize or eliminate that gap um, that exists between Africa and the rest of the world. Henry Yakarundi, the innovator behind innovative, innovative entrepreneur from Rwanda. Bon plaisir d'accueillir aujourd'hui Henri Nyakarundi. Pour en parler, l'équipage reçoit son concepteur, Monsieur Henri Nyakarundi. Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the HN Vlog. Today, I want to talk about an interesting topic, something that I, not in detail, but I always trying to bring it up. But I think COVID-19 really, really shows the gap of the economic strategy that Africa is, has developed and is developing. I've, I've never liked the GDP index. It doesn't reflect the gaps that exist in the economy uh, of Africa and all the, the, the challenges that we're facing. And, and yes, we, you have a growth happening. You have a development happening but you also have a lack of knowledge transfer happening. You have a lack of industries. So you see all the big, and that's what was my last video, all the big infrastructure, hotels, um, road, railroad, um, airports, always done by outsiders, outside Africa. And there's a lot of play in there. It's not just that. I mean, there's a lot of fact that, you know, some of those organizations bring the money, but it's still not an excuse, right? You know, you cannot just continue on this path thinking that this is going to be, you know, the way forward for Africa. It's just not going to be the way forward. We talk about manufacturing, but who's going to do the manufacturing? What knowledge transfer? What are we going to own? Because if we don't develop the internal economy, what I mean by internal trading among ourselves you know buying technology among ourselves and all those things this the the the, the, tr the wealth transfer will never happen on the continent it's still going to happen outside and I, I i just wanted to really address this because i think it's very very important and in this day and age you know if you don't own your technology at least part of it you, you're not you're not in control of anything basically somebody else is controlling you because you know they can shut you down they can do pretty much whatever they want to do you know and and you're always going to be dependent now I don't I'm not in a, a big believer that we need to control the whole value chain the whole technology value chain I mean some countries uh, some uh, some states some con some 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 comp companies are, are good at certain things and as a matter of fact, a lot of the products or innovations from the West, from the East, are not really viable here in Africa. We still have a lot of long way to go. <clears throat> but with the last continent in general, uh, and even within the continent varies, because you have Morocco and you can, you can see gaps also in South Africa, and then you have the bottom line. But in general, if you look at the whole continent, we're the last continent where we're behind everybody else on technology, on innovation. I mean, look at agriculture. And, and, I, and maybe that's another vlog. And, I, and, and we're trying to copy-paste model, which is another issue that I have, which does not work. Like, we, we, we trying to, we're trying to eliminate, for example, small farmers uh, and, and being, you know, build conglomerate, big companies and big organizations. And I don't think that's the way forward in Africa, especially with the population growth. But let, let, let's talk about it a, a little bit. How, how are we behind? We're behind 
in almost everything. Um, in, in agricultural development, uh, innovation sector, drone now, um, uh, name it, man, in, in, in building infrastructures. Uh, and I'm talking about new technology to be implemented. But how can we bridge that gap? How can we eliminate or minimize the gap? I don't think we'll, we'll eliminate the gap in, in my generation, for sure, but minimize the gap. You know, because I see a lot of companies um, startups doing amazing job don't get the, the capital to really compete when companies are spending billions and billions of dollars you know I, I'll tell you for example I was reading about the, the, ch the chip sector where um, Apple is no longer going to work with Intel and develop their own chip and that's just again um, it's going to be a game changer you know because companies now those who can who has the resources understand the, the power of minimizing the dependency on other entities and if you have the, the, the resources to do so then you should in the beginning yes you outsource you depend on a lot of outside help but at the end you know you got to find a way to consolidate as much as you can um, so you, you this is exactly what's happening on the continent but how do you bridge the gap we need to start acquiring companies companies that have the expertise in robotics in in new uh hardware innovation for manufacturing for example which is uh, going to be the next future because we cannot produce the way it used to be there's a lot of efficiency manufacturing now being developed processing being developed that we need to acquire we need to acquire companies we need to buy up companies with the and it has to be on the private sector, not on the government level. But the government has to enable access to funding and all to able to do that. That's the only way we're going to acquire or we're going to bridge this gap of innovation. And, and sorry, we got, we got helicopters heavy today. Wow. Anyway, we need to find a way to uh, <laughs> we need to find a way to acquire companies that has the edge of technology because it's not just the technology you're acquiring it's also the knowledge the team the knowledge and there has to be foreign companies whether it's in Asia Europe um, you know America and they don't have to be big companies it can be startups like do you know that Africa is still the only company that don't play the merger acquisition uh, on the startup level? When I say don't play, it is very minimal uh, acquisition of innovative startup within the continent from big companies. You know, we, we just, everybody wants to do their own thing. Everybody wants to develop their own innovation. And at the end of the day, we don't do much. We're competing with each other in some case we should but we don't get the bigger picture so this is what I'm proposing man big companies with the support of the government we need to acquire companies acquire the knowledge and give a time limit or when can we have as much transfer uh, of knowledge as possible to bridge this gap and I'm going to end with this and China as, as many issues that I, I see the Chinese implication in the African market is but fundamentally, China, in 20 years, was able to bridge that gap as a whole. They still have gap on other stuff, but overall now, they produce technology. They export technology, some to the West, a lot to Africa. Uh, we need to do the same thing, man. But we need to speed up. Instead of 20, we should make it in 10 years, and I think it's possible. Anyway, put your comment down there. Let me know what you think. Uh, but that's that's the only way, you know, uh, I see this. Because if after COVID, we keep doing the same thing, well, guess what? We're going to get the same result. All right, man. Take care.